It's an honor to be president of this organization. Welcome to our celebration of service. I am starting the meeting a little early, if you notice that, because we have a jam-packed agenda today. Some of it's gonna be a lot of fun. So um, thank you for being with us. And uh, I wanna share the thought for the day. It comes from Theodore Roosevelt. Believe you can, and you're halfway there. So it's something to think about as we enter this holiday period. Uh, Raj Hadawi is going to be our reflector, and he's online. So Raj. I think you're muted, Raj. I'm muted. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Raj Haddawi. To the people I haven't met or they don't know me, I'm talking to you from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Anybody who hasn't born or raised in Monroe County, Indiana, has a story, how did they end in Bloomington? And today I'm sharing my and my family's story with all of you. Some ha uh, heard some of it, some read some of it, but many of you probably not. My story go back 52 years ago. 1971, I was in training at the University of Louisville. We were very, very busy folks. And for a reason or another, that afternoon, late in August, they say, no, no work for you this afternoon. Go do whatever you want. So I asked, is there any near park I could take my family to? Well, everyone from that, by the way, I work in the operating room. Everybody from the nursing staff, go take your family to the park. It's a great early fall day. I said, what park we go to? Without exception, not all of them mentioned Brown County State Park. And how do you go there? Oh, go 65 North, Columbus, turn west, foreign language to me. So I grabbed my uh, Ron McNeil report, uh, map, which you people in my age, they know, the people the younger, they don't. Well, we drove, we took the wife, she was happy. We took our two daughters, two years old daughter along with us. And here we go, Brown County State Park, entered the north exit, beautiful, and a closed bridge we went underneath, and you climb a hill, and there is a beautiful afternoon in the park. Cooked something to eat, played with the daughter, and we decided it's time for us to go home in Louisville. Well, the obvious thing, follow the exit sign. So we follow that exit sign, and my goodness, this time no hill to come down, no cover a bridge to go underneath it, just straight to the road. Huh. We got lost. Well, looking straight at us, there is a sign saying Bloomington, 11 miles. My wife looked at me and I looked at her and we said, well, that's a nice name of a town. Let's go see it. We drove. Open to Third Street, the lawn, the lawn of the homes, immaculate and clean, stopped by the first Traffic light, day mortuary to the right, gas station across, had a restaurant in the front of us, the bank in the front of us. And through that, we spotted a sign saying Indiana University, straight. Wow, Indiana University, not in, Blue, not in Indianapolis, in Bloomington. Tell you how much I know. So we drove. Jordan Street, turn right. Oh my goodness, the immaculate, beautiful campus. That week, apparently the student hasn't arrived yet, so it was wide open for us. We toured campus, we enjoyed immensely. And if many of you remember, if you're on campus, you could hit Kirkwood without any trouble because no sample gate at that time. I drove toward camp, I drove toward town, a beautiful square, nicely maintained and clean. And while we're turning around, there is another sign saying hospital with arrow at it. Yeah, let's go see what they have. 
We arrived there to the west side of the hospital. My goodness, a big construction going on. They adding a new department of emergency room as well as x-ray. And there is a tent at the door. So I said, let me check them out. Well, who is in the tent? The nurses and the emergency room doctor, they have no place even to be in the building. So they were administering their care in tents. I introduced myself to them and my goodness, their eyelids, right, please come. This is a place you could be very happy here. We could be very happy with you here. Well, then before I know it, we met Bud Core, our late beloved Rotarian. And Bud could not have enough of me. He really threw the red carpet for me. And he told me, please come. I will do whatever I can in my capacity to help you out. We went back home to Louisville. By the way, I miss to say that a week before this trip, I got an offer to join the orthopedic department of no less than the Redskin football team. They needed a hand surgeon, and the hand surgeon are sparse at that time. And they heard of me, and they asked me. And I said, I will consider it. We were excited, but very reluctant at the same time. So next day in the operating room, my boss, Harold Kleinert, many of you might heard that name before, he said, Raj, what did you do in your afternoon off? Because those are so rare, they never come. So I told him what I encountered. The man put the knife in one hand on the table and the other pickup on the table and looked me in the eye. And he said, Raj, that is the finest town in the whole Midwest of America. Wow, my boss think about it that way. So I went home, told Darlene, my wife, what I encountered from our boss. And we were thinking about it, thinking about it. Sunday came in. There is a issue of the Courier Journal. Many of you probably knows about it. It has a full page, full page, about the opening day of the Music Arts Center in Bloomington, Indiana. The cost $10 million. Wow. So, interview with no less than Dean Charles Webb. I read every letter of that article, maybe more than once. And the way he described the new building, unique in its architect and its design, as well as they will have six opera a season. They will have weekly symphony orchestra, weekly jazz concert. My gosh, goodness, good to be true. So we sat on the weekend, Darlene and I, and we decided maybe we should consider this town. That is a better offer to us to live. As we are in medicine, many of you may know this in different fields, Always found the place you want to live. Be kind and gentle with the people you meet and do the best job you've been trained to do and nothing will worry you after that. Well, we apply that to principle. Monday morning, I called the orthopedic surgeon with the red skin and I said, sir, I think I may not be able to do it. He was stunned. What is his counter offer? He tripled my salary if I come. I said, no, sir. We already made our mind. I appreciate all that. And obviously, he was unhappy, but I was delighted. The bottom line of this story, I think the coincidence of high power played a big role in it. I do believe that we made the right decision for us. And I do believe that Washington Redskin lost and Bloomington, Indiana won. Thank you. Thank you, Raj. Thank you.
Thank you, Raj. And to introduce our guest today, Peggy Frisbee. May I, uh, microphone, right? <laughs> uh, I want to first give a shout out back to Raj Hadawi, Dr. Raj Hadawi. Uh, for those of you who may not be familiar with him, who is such a pillar of our community, and I'm so happy to have him still in Rotary, uh, super responsible after his long career for establishing Volunteers of Medicine, a terrific clinic that served the low income and still serves today through HealthNet. Um, so a man of much kindness and generosity and very much a Rotarian. Um, I wanna introduce our guests today who are Kathy Croxton and Joe Myers, guests of Jim Bright uh, from Myers Croxton Group. If you would stand so we can recognize you. And we also have with us today, Sterling Daniel, who is with IU's Rotaract. Can you stand? Thank you. Uh, if, uh, um, if you have any questions about Rotary, please uh, ask anybody uh, who's in the club, including the person right next to you. <laughs> Thanks, Peggy. Joy, do we have anybody in the Zoom yeah. world? Yes, Ron, we do. We have another guest of Jim Bright. We have joining us this afternoon, Cadet Noah Jager. Noah, I hope I'm pronouncing your last name right, who is with the U.S. Military Academy at West Point. And he will be actually hoping to apply for the All Indiana Rotary Global Scholarship. So welcome to Noah. Thank you, Joy. We do have a birthday coming up this week, uh, December 10th, Michael Shermas. So happy birthday, Michael. We have some Rotary anniversaries. Jim Harvey in our club, it says 17 years, but 48 years in Rotary total. That wins the award for the day. Congratulations, Jim. Uh, Jeff Richardson, uh, two years. Spud Washington, one year, and Stephen Wicks, one year. Congratulations. I want to remind you that our holiday party is this Thursday evening, 5.30 at the Bloomington Country Club. 80 Rotarians and their spouses will be there, 80 total, that will include spouses. Um, so we'll have a festive event. You also probably received a letter in the mail asking for your help to build our endowment for scholarships. If you didn't receive it yet, you'll receive it shortly. Uh, but again, uh, Lauren Snyder has been pushing this for a number of years to get an endowment that will help us really pay tribute to the scholars in our community. Now, uh, without further ado, if Tyler will come forward, he's going to give us a pre-recital uh, tune. And I wanna remind you that is gonna be at our hall on December 9th at 4 p.m. I hope you can join me we can support Tyler in his master's recital. Test, test. Yeah, bring your horn. <laughs>
Tyler, know that the whole Rotary Club will be in support of you for your recital coming up soon. I'd like to ask Mike Baker to come forward. We have some Paul Harris recognition. Mike? Thank you, President Ron. Welcome guests and fellow Rotarians. My pleasure to be up here today. You know, one thing I was thinking about as I get older, um, I think about all the friends that I've lost. I guess being a trail guide was a bad idea. <clears throat> Anyhow, yeah, think about that one for a minute. <clears throat> My privilege today to recognize three of our members. Could Jim Shea, Peggy Frisbee, and Sally Gaskell please come up here and join me? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna start off with Peggy. You all know Peggy is our Rotary Foundation Chair. I remember the day she asked me to be co-chair. I accepted and she took off six months for vacation. Was it six months? I think it was. Happy to have her back for a week before she starts another trip. You all know she's retired from her legal work as one of the top estate attorneys in Bloomington. I remember to go see her with my wife about our estate. We have a fairly large estate. And I went in, met with her and told her, I said, we've got a really large estate and we need some help. And she's, she seemed pretty excited. 
So I said, well, the first question I have is, what kind of hay do we plant for our sheep? She looked at me like, I said, well, you know, I told you we had a big estate. I said, we also want to know, you know, what kind of barns do we need to fix up? What do we do remediation on the plants? She just looked at me like she was stumped. Well, that was a short visit. Um, we left. So a different kind of estate, Peggy. <laughs> anyway, Peggy has done a fantastic job of leading our Rory Committee for the last two years, helping our club meet and exceed its goals and supporting the Rory International Foundation. A member since 1997, Peggy is being recognized with her Paul Harris Fellow Plus Two. Next, we have Sally Gaskell, Sarah Jane. Sally has been a member of our club since 2003. Birthplace, Kansas City, Missouri, home of the Royals, although I think she's a St. Louis fan. Oh, okay, sorry, I got that wrong. Most of you know Sally has an intense love for baseball. I had some really good lines about getting to first base, but my wife put the King's X on that one. So, so. Sally has served as chair of Bloomington Arts Council, director of Strategic National Arts Alumni Project at IUSPIA. She's supported about every nonprofit arts organization there is in Monroe, Monroe County, created the Arts Alliance of Greater Bloomington in 2010, and was our club president in 2021 22. Now, you have to tell me if I get this right, because I'm not trying to make fun of it. I'm just not sure I pronounce it right. But if you've ever heard voices, know they? A chamber choir, you'll know she's a terrific, got a terrific voice. And I think that would be a great program for us someday. Today, Sally will receive her Paul Harris Fellow plus five pin. Last but not least, we have Jim, Jimmy, Jimbo, Shay. What can I say about Jim today? Actually, not much. Um, I asked him for just a short bio, but 10 pages, really? <laughs> and I think that's quite a month. Jim recently retired from Indiana University Luddy School of Informatics, Computing, and Engineering, where he was in charge of coming up with a short name for the school. <laughs> actually, actually, he was Senior Director of Planning and Communication and Instrumental and getting the new unbelievable Luddy building up and running. He told me one of his favorite meetings was with all the professors in one room, all deciding what kind of colors to pick out to paint their room. Close. Jim has been on our club since 2012. And like Peg and Sally have served on multiple committees, uh, service projects and support of our club. I think Jim has introduced at least 20 new directors at Luddy for programs. Okay, maybe not 20. Okay, now you probably don't know this. He's an avid golfer, he thinks he's a golfing coach, and I've been told that he has three hole in ones. But let me tell you about the last one Cascades. Jim takes a drive, didn't like it. Took another one, hole in one. Hole in one. I think that's two, Jim. Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, Jim is here for his Paul Harris Fellow Plus One. So congratulations to all three of you. You got it? Thank you, Peggy. Thank you. I'd like to ask all the Paul Harris members to stand that are in the room today be recognized. Jeff Jackson is here. He's an organizational member of our Rotary Club through the city of Bloomington to announce Rotary Hoosier Karaoke. Carpool Karaoke. Hello. I spoke to Rotary Club several months ago. As a reminder, Go, Boom Go Bloomington is the new transportation demand management program for the city of Bloomington. Mm -hmm. Go Bloomington's mission is to reduce the number of single occupant vehicles that operate in our community by promoting bi walking, biking, public transit, carpooling, van pooling, micro mobility, and teleworking. Reducing SOVs will de de decrease traffic, reduce carbon emissions, and improve parking availability. Go Bloomington has created a Hoosier Carpool Karaoke 
video campaign to promote awareness for the community's sustainable mobility options. Go Bloomington has done several Hoosier Carpool Carry video videos with IU athletes from the IU men's and women's basketball teams, the IU football team, and from IU men's and women's soccer teams. The Hoosier Carpool Carry videos have been very popular on social media. We want to build awareness we want to build on the success of the Hoosier Carpool Carry video campaign by getting community groups involved with making the videos. I'm happy to announce that the Rotary Club is the first group in Bloomington to participate in making a Hoosier Carpool Karaoke video. I want to take this opportunity to present to you today the Rotary Club's Hoosier Carpool Karaoke video. Thank you. Oh, are we being filmed right now? Yes. Oh. oh. <laughs> I think I don't know. When you're alone and life is making you lonely, you can always go down downtown. We are members of the Bloomington Road. Story Club. Please, Please register, register at gobloomington.com. Org to show your support for sustainable mobility options. I'm in love. Ooh, I'm a believer. I believe if I try. I'm Sally Gaskell. Lynn Schwartzberg. Connie Shigalis. And we're with the Rotary Club of Bloomington here for some Hoosier karaoke. Find, Find your ride at gobloomington.org. Read easy, feel good, and save money. Start today at gobloomington.org. Now, one of the seven areas of focus for Rotary International and local is the environment. What could be better than carpooling? Learn more at gobloomington.org. And now the music! When you're alone and life is making you lonely, you can always go. Downtown. Downtown, so maybe I'll see you there. We can forget all our troubles, forget all our cares, and go downtown. Things in the great when you're downtown. A couple of years ago, I ended Thanks, up ladies. Work. I will send that out so you can all enjoy that in the privacy of your own home. <laughs> to introduce our program today, Aaron Brewing. Hello, hello. So long time ago when I was a real journalist covering a newspaper or crime for a newspaper, seeing the worst people had to offer, never imagined I'd want to connect with any of the people I spent any time with. When I found my way to Bloom Magazine, that completely changed. Interviewing some truly complicated, interesting, and inspiring folks, uh, it turns out it's pretty nice. This is how I met Pablo Fuentes. We had coffee, female companion happened to be there, uh, she afterwards commented, wow, you guys seem to click, and I think we did. We were there to talk about Cosmic Song Songwriters Festival, and it was mentioned, I think. Uh, saw about 10 other things he was doing that really impressed me that I thought were worth, worthy of their own articles, uh, things he was doing here in Bloomington, uh, in the community, making it a better place. Uh, for example, in the winter, he leads a group to the lake for a weekly icy swim. He's invited me every week, but I have yet to make it. Uh, Pablo and his wife, Sarah, were the first two individuals at the Mills program, Bloomington Remote, uh, a, a, a thing that's designed to attract remote workers to Bloomington. Uh, they were the first two that were brought in. Uh, these are folks that encouraged to move here, uh, work remotely, bring their high paying jobs and uh, get involved in the community. Uh, and they also have two adorable twins. Uh, he's a supporter of the arts. He's on the board of the BCT uh, with several people here. Uh, in case you're wondering, he also plays music. Uh, his music, if you get a chance, look up Truck Stop Denim by Oso Blues, his alter ego. 
It is a banger. I uh, haven't even touched on his entrepreneurship, which is at the heart of who he is, but as all of these things are. It's good to have friends like him, uh, one to push you both mentally and physically, discussing movies and books and so forth, smoking a cigar or two. I'm glad we're friends and he is here in this uh, fine city. It's not perfect, but it is indeed a very nice city, which Pablo is here to tell you all about. All right. I've been told that I'm the first one that is able to walk the history of, here we go, boom, we got a new lab mic. Go technology, All right? Check, 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 check. And uh, get the slides up, yeah. get started. Meanwhile, uh, whoa, okay. I'm learning about where I can and cannot go in my uh, walks. Should we maybe turn the other mic off? Is, that, is it feeding back? Check, check, check. All right, we'll try this out, see how it goes. Still a check, check. Okay, awesome. All right, thank you for having me here. Uh, my name is Pablo Fuentes, and um, I was fortunate to meet Aaron Brewington through the profile that he did of Cosmic Songwriter in Blue Magazine. Uh, we'll share a little bit more about what Cosmic Songwriter is and how we got to create it. But uh, my talk today is really about creating connection and community in a new place. And some of the things that Aaron mentioned are, these are things that I've cultivated over the year, over the years, many times, most times really out of necessity. Uh, and they have really shaped me and turned me into the person that I am today that I'm very fortunate to be here in, in Bloomington. We're gonna start with this guy right here. So this is little Pablito. He is about, uh, I think about three years old. And he has no idea what's coming. There's a big, big adventure in front of him. And it'll be a series of different events uh, all over the globe that are going to take him and uproot him. And uprooting is something that feels, uh, we, we have a deep sense and deep need to belong. And being uprooted and feeling like you no longer have a place, especially when you are that old, is, is difficult, it's challenging. And at the same time, the silver lining in that is that it really teaches you new skills and how to connect with people. This is a map of all the places where at some point I've, played, I've paid rent or my family has paid rent. So I was born in Santiago, Chile, lived in Germany as a kid in Freiburg and Breisgau, went back to Chile. My father worked for the United Nations in New York. Then I went back to Chile and then we'll zoom in and actually go in. These are all the places in the United States where I paid rent. Uh, moved to Northern California. My mom was a professor at Sonoma State University. Uh, I ended up going to UCLA for undergrad, back to Menlo Park. Moved to Bend, Oregon for a few years, if you've ever been there, beautiful place in Central Oregon. Uh, went to grad school in Palo Alto at Stanford Graduate School of Business. And then from there, moved to San Francisco, spent some time in Colorado, moved to Austin, Texas. And now here, here we are in Bloomington, Indiana. So yeah. <laughs> And uh, while, while looking at it on a map, it, it, the, the longest part of this presentation was creating this map <laughs> uh, in, in terms of preparing it. But uh, looking at this, um, sure, the headlines sound like, oh man, that's, that's a lot of really interesting places and so forth. And at the same time, uh, there were a lot of challenges along the way. This was me at age 15, about six months before moving to the US and Santiago, Chile. Uh, I wish I still had that hair, but I certainly uh, wish, uh, I, I am very happy that I've found a way to belong in a way that I didn't have back then. At this age, I went from living in Santiago, Chile, which is a city that looks like this, if you've ever been there, about 5 million people next to the Andes Mountains, a uh, very um, a bustling metropolis. Uh, I moved to a place that looked like this, very different. That is Sonoma County that is near Petaluma, California, where I went to high school. And I showed up here. My English has gotten a little better in the intervening years. Uh, but at that point, I, English was and still is my second language. And, and it's something that uh, I was the only Hispanic kid at a high school of 100 kids in my graduating class who had all known each other since the first grade. 
So if you think about what it means to do that, to come to a new place where you, you know, are learning the language and things look very different uh, and also things feel very different, that was tremendously challenging. Now I'd had some, I was uprooted in some way five times before the age of 16. So I had some game film in terms of what, what this looks like and, 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 and what to do. But I was certainly a very lonely time in my life. And that's when things really clicked for me. So <clears throat> when you're in a lonely time and when you're in a, in a time where maybe you're not getting invited to the parties that you want to get invited to, you're not able to communicate with people in the way that you want to communicate with. <clears throat> one of the things that's really magical is that you have the ability to create your own reality. You get to choose and a lot of what we're going to talk about today is choosing and, and how we can take adversity or turn it into something better. <clears throat> One of the things that I learned is that if you throw the party, you get to dictate the terms of what's going on. So this is um, for my 30th birthday. I got a group of friends together from different stages of my life. These are each each. There's two people from each decade of my life up until uh, up until I was, you know, two people from college, two people from Bend, Oregon two people from grad school. At, the, at this point, I just graduated from, from grad school. This is the summit of Mount Whitney, uh, the tallest point in the lower 48 and uh, 14,500 feet. And I organized this as a way to bring people together who had meant a lot in my life. And when I got to the US at age 16, the way I did that was by organizing a soccer team and realizing like, hey, if you're the person who's putting things together, you don't have to wait for anybody to invite you. You're the person who's actually doing it and bringing people together. So this was a, a, an example of, of some of the things that happened and what, and it's really become a way of living for me in general. Uh, and this extends to pretty much every area of my life, including business. This is the company I started out of uh, Stanford called Proven. It was a company to help blue collar and service workers get jobs using their cell phones. Uh, originally, their feature phones and text messages, and then as um, the company was started in 2009 when iPhones had just come out in 2008. So eventually it became a mobile app company, but really is mobile, you know, old school mobile. Uh, only, only one step above, uh, you know, Gordon Gecko and Wall Street grabbing a brick in his phone. Uh, this is my co-founder, Sean Falconer. That was the Yeti that we had in our office uh, with, with our T-shirt. It's a, uh, and th this really became, uh, I, saw, I ended up selling this company after 10 years. And now I started a new company called MakePath. We build custom geospatial and uh, artificial intelligence applications for big clients like Walmart and big telecoms and things like that. And that is the company I currently uh, uh, run or co-run with my current business partner, Brendan. But again, the last time I looked for a job in the traditional sense of looking for a job was 2005. Uh, so I'm coming up in almost 20 years uh, of doing that. And uh, I can't tell you that it's always been comfortable, but it's always been very authentic to me. And again, seeking that discomfort and being okay with being, um, you know, new in a place and with trying new things, with failing over and over has been really fundamental to uh, a lot of the things that I've ended up doing in life. 36. 36 is the number of hours that I had been in Bloomington, Indiana before my wife and I picked up our entire life in Austin, Texas, and moved here in 2021. That's not a lot of time. Uh, there's a lot of running on faith on that. Uh, my wife grew up here. She went to Bloomington North. She went to IU. Uh, she had lived in Indianapolis. We met when I lived, I was playing music in Austin, Texas. Still, that's a lot of faith. Uh, we were looking for a place that had great community, for a place that had a college, for a place that had um, a good nature, a good art scene, and hopefully mountains. So um, I do live on the side of town that's closest to Brown County State Park, as, as, our, as our friend online had said earlier. So I uh, really love uh, Brown County and getting out there uh, and really you know, taking advantage of that. But uh, let's just say we got hills instead. But it's, you know, we'll, we'll, take, we'll take all the other ones. But this place has been amazing to us. And I drew upon all of the things that we talked about when we moved here to really start creating community. And hey, the playbook that I know is start creating cool things and slowly but surely people will start joining. Now, 40% of adults say that they're lonely. 
<clears throat> that is a staggering statistic. And if you talk to people in Bloomington, a lot of times they talk about how difficult it is to make friends as an adult. Now you are here, and this is one of the ways in which you are creating community and you are coming together and creating friends and, and, and relationships with adults. But if you look at people out on the street, most people are lonely. <clears throat> this is me right here, standing on Lake Monroe. I'm on the, on the, on the right hand right here in the, in the orange hat. This is my friend and neighbor, Justin. He'd moved to Bloomington about the same time. He's a, a big power attorney with the government who happened to move here during the, you know, right after the pandemic doing remote work. And he also has heard of the uh, positive um, health benefits, both mental health and physical health of getting into a little bit of cold water. So we started going out there initially, it was the both of us. And we started uh, you know, going out there, cutting a hole in the ice uh, and going out there. Initially you start, uh, you know, I've been doing some form of cold water exposure for about seven years now. Uh, I only started getting some cold lakes about three years ago. And the first time I lasted about 15, 20 seconds and I was very scared and I, when I came out. Over time, you can learn how to control your mind, control your breathing. And now you, I can stay in water as 33 for about probably 10, 12 minutes. And if it's in the 40s, closer to 20, 25. And that, you, that's all possible. Every single person here in this room can do that. And, and I encourage you, as I have encouraged Aaron, to come join us every Sunday of the winter at 11 a.m. at Paint Town Beach. Uh, many members of the community have decided to start joining us. So um, that's me with, uh, with less hair. There's Justin, there's other people. Uh, the, he, actually, this is Johnny Perone, incredible musician. He's a drummer on my trio, and he's an incredible jazz musician. And Ditley, who's another guy. There's all kinds of people. That's Ben Swanson, the head of Secretly Group. His daughter is 11, was 11 years old. By the way, anybody who comes five out of the 12 weeks of the winter gets a patch. That's another thing I've learned over the years. People will do anything for a patch. So you bring, you bring people together and the patch is a big deal, right? So anybody who comes, again, five out of the 12 weeks of the winter, and that's Ellen. She was 11 in this photo. She's 12 the second year she earned her patch. She's very excited to start her third season. She is now a two-time patch holder of the Paint Town Polar Crazies Club, which is what we call ourselves. Now, it's a little bit different if you've ever done a um, polar plunge for New Year's. I know there's a group that does that here. Uh, and for that group, people just run in and run out and it's like, ooh, ooh, great, okay, coffee and donuts. This is more, we actually talk about breathing. We do breathing exercises on the beach and we calmly walk in and see and embrace the teacher as a cold. I'm sorry, the cold is a teacher. You know what I'm trying to say. Um, this has become a great community of people. This past year, we had 30 people who came at some point, over 30 people came at some point and 12 patch earners up from six the year before and about 15 people that come out. So this is all, you know, people from all walks of life, from, from healthcare workers to attorneys to truck drivers to, you know, label owners to, I mean, all, all, all walks of life. It's, it's, it's been an awesome community. So again, I invite you to come join. Another example of a way that I strive to create a community is through music. I learned how to play music in Austin, Texas. Uh, really, I uh, dedicated myself to it in uh, really fairly recently in 2014. And uh, for a long time, I had, I suffered from something that I like to call the Mozart effect, which is the Mozart effect is if you have a little kid and if they're not, little Johnny or little Jenny is not playing in front of the court by the time they're 10, like for everybody saying like how amazing they are at music, well, then you're probably not any good at music. So you shouldn't even try. I liken that to saying that you shouldn't work out because you're not going to the Olympics. I think you should 100% foster the ability to create music and the ability to create art and come together because it is such a common language for people to connect. And for me, it was magical. It's something that I dedicated myself to in 2014. I saw different, uh, different mentors and different teachers, I, including uh, I produced a record for Carl Weathersby, who's a Chicago Blues Hall of Famer. He was my mentor in Austin uh, and got to meet all kinds of amazing people. I was backstage with Buddy Guy and all kinds of folks like that. But really, it came from dedicating myself to learning the craft. And when I got here, I took a lot of the experiences that I had touring and playing in Texas and Mississippi and Tennessee and Louisiana, a lot of that area, and uh, had incredible influences and mentors. Um, our, our friend, um, 
I, it, my, my friend Matt Beiser, for example, runs uh, Luck Reunion, which is an, an event at Willie Nelson's ranch every March. And he inspired me uh, a lot. And then um, the, a good friend of mine is the ma manager of the Bluebird Cafe in Nashville, which is a songwriter venue. And really learn how to bring people together. And my friend Sean McDermott and I co-founded what became Cosmic Songwriter, which is a nonprofit. Uh, that is us on stage at the Busker Chumley. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the Busker Chumley, which has also been an incredible place and center of community for me. I've met many people and I see many friendly faces in the room, uh, including our new executive director, who's amazing rock star, Steve Versa, who's one of your members. Yeah, big round of applause for Steve Versa, who is leading the organization forward. And uh, Sean and I were originally met through the board and started out with a monthly showcase at the Orbit Room. We have our second anniversary showcase tomorrow, if you're free, at 7 p.m. Uh, but uh, we are, you know, have this group of songwriters, uh, about 200 now that are part of our mailing list and, and, and uh, about under 100 that have been on our stage at some point sharing their songs. This is, these are the photos of our uh, songwriter festival. So the songwriter festival is a four day event. And that's how I met Aaron originally for the Bloom Magazine feature on Cosmic Songwriters. And we are having our second annual event, uh, May 15th through the 18th. And we have, uh, this is Jason Wilbur, who played at the Bluebird, and, that, and we played, uh, we had folks at the Block House, Jamie Harris at the, um, uh, at the Orbit Room. And then this is uh, some of the folks uh, played at the, at the Busker Chumley. You may know Charlie Jessup, who's a, a local musician, and my friends Nick and Paige from, from Austin. So these, these are the kinds of things that we're doing. We had over 700 people come to the first festival last year. We wanna have even more people come this year. We've had incredible support from the community. One of the things that you find out is when you start putting creativity and energy into bringing people together, you, uh, people join. People end up uh, <clears throat> coming together and supporting things. So Mike McAfee of Visit Bloomington, I, I believe he spoke here uh, recently. He's incredible, he's a good friend of mine, and he has uh, given a lot of support to us. Uh, folks from German America and, and Robert Midas of, of Bloomington Roots. Um, but again, a lot of community has been created around music. And, and when I, a, a big part of it was born when I joined, when Sarah invited me to join the board of the Busker Chumley, which came about through another uh, axis of community here in town, which is Patty's at the Dimension Mill, an incredible community of folks. And I want to give a shout out to them for everything they're doing to bring people here to Bloomington uh, this amazing, amazing place that we call home. <clears throat> this is another example. We, uh, I live in a neighborhood called Hoosier Acres, right, right on the other side of, uh, of the old Kmart over there. Uh, this is our front lawn. We actually, every 4th of July, uh, have the entire neighborhood come to uh, the, our front lawn and have live music and have to do a potluck and, you know, have 150 of our best friends hanging out in, in, in the front yard. Uh, and again, we... Um, put ourselves out there as a, as a place where people can meet because the more, again, if you throw the party, then, then you're at the party. <clears throat> there are three pillars as I wrap up here uh, that are really uh, important for me and, 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 and what I've learned from creating a community. So one of them is gratitude. Always really being grateful and always finding ways to give back and finding ways like whenever people are participating in any of these things, always seeking ways to put energy into pay, and paying it forward and having gratitude. So it's one thing to be thankful and to say like, hey, I'm thankful, or say, even tell somebody, hey, thank you. And it's another thing to always consistently try to figure out, okay, there are other people who are in their own journey and their own mission, what can I do to help them and express that gratitude to pay it forward and amplify that energy? The other one is connection. And again, we talked a lot about what we're doing here today, right? And like everybody's coming together, and always seeking for ways to connect. And that might mean, that doesn't have to mean that you have to start a nonprofit or anything like that, but whenever you are, and what I've been practicing is whenever I'm in front of somebody, really trying to connect and listen to what they're saying. And because everybody's got a different story and, and different things that they're dealing with, and then figuring out uh, how can you participate in what they're doing and invite them along to the things that you're doing. And the, the third one is really being a part of something bigger than yourself. And you're all you know, living that here by being a part of Rotary. But I think really, it's really important to remember that, whether it's at the micro level 
of being a part of a family or like a, a medium level being a part of a community or the macro level really being part of uh, of a universe and what God has created. I think it's really important to think and remember that it's very easy to get in our own minds and like, you know, get pissed off about somebody cut, cutting us in traffic, cutting us off in traffic or being upset about something that didn't go exactly right. Or, um, you know, uh, they, there's a, a Buddhist teacher, Jack Cornfield that I, that I follow uh, that talks about like, I, he actually quoted from somebody else. I know the original quote is like, I, I try not to go uh, and, and, and spend too much time with, with my mind because it's a scary place. And, you know, and you have to be really careful. And now, obviously, I think there's a lot of value to like self-exploration, exploring your mind. We can talk a little bit about that if you're interested. In, I've done a 10-day Vipassana meditation retreat where you start from 5 in the morning until 9 p.m. If you're interested in talking about that, happy to talk about that. I think there's a lot of value to self-exploration. But there's a lot of value in really getting out there and creating and participating in something bigger than yourself. You don't always choose where your seed lands. And you have no idea where exactly it is that you're going to be. <clears throat> there's times in our lives when we land in fertile places where things grow. And there's times in our lives where we uh, end up landing here in, in the crack in the sidewalk. And you have a choice as to what you do. And you can choose to thrive. Now, <clears throat> I look for like different pictures um, <clears throat> that, that, that exemplify this. And it's really important for me to realize and to empower other people to realize the choice that we have and the outcomes that we have in our lives. Every event, to quote Stoic philosophy, and both Marcus Aurelius and Seneca has two handles. And you can choose the handle, or it's multiple handles, more than two. And even the events that are uh, dark, that are difficult, you can choose the handle that you have. <laughs> this is... It's my wife, Sarah. It's my twins, Weston and Parker. And I'm very grateful to be here. And one of the things that I want to ask you today is <clears throat> there is something you can do in thinking about that 40% number. If somebody is reaching out, be there for them. And also, if you're thinking about starting something <clears throat> that you think can bring people together, don't be afraid to do that. Thank you very much. But we have time for a couple of questions. Yes, sir. Hi. Uh, in the write-up uh, introducing you, your program today, it mentioned that you were influenced to come here from, uh, <clears throat> one of the things was the Bloomington remote sure. uh, site and uh, the, uh, the mill. And I wondered how that affected you and also whether you're doing anything to promote Bloomington and other kinds of small cities like us uh, to other remote workers and entrepreneurs. Sure. Um, so, uh, yes, I mean, Pat East and the, the program, the running of the mill has been fantastic. Uh, there's been many, uh, one of my neighbors recently that moved in, he was on the fence about moving in. And I've certainly been connected with different people who are interested in, in moving here and uh, sung the praises of what you know an amazing place this is. Uh, so, yeah, certainly. I, I wouldn't say that I, at the moment I'm doing any proactive efforts where I'm out there in a speaking circuit saying like, hey, everybody come to Bloomington. But I've certainly been a resource and connected with many people who are thinking about that. Yeah, uh, a question is, uh, where is your ground? What is What, what grounds you? And I, I want to observe also that you, you uh, have, a, I have a sense that you're an introvert. I'm a recovering extrovert. <laughs> okay, okay. So what grounds you? Yeah. Uh, thank you for that question. Um, I am a recovering extrovert for a long time. I think um, because of a difficult relationship with my father growing up and all the uprooting, I think I sought approval in other people and I sought approval outside and that manifested itself in like an almost like uh, over the top extrovert. 
over the years, I've become much more introverted. And like, you know, this morning I started with you know, cold water uh, and with 20-minute uh, meditation and with journaling. And all those things are things that ground me and really bring me back and allow me to, um, you know, have in Stoic philosophy too. I read a book called Daily Stoic every day. And those are the ideas and things that help ground me and bring me back. Uh, because I, like everybody else, my mind also wanders and goes to places which are sometimes fun and sometimes not fun. So it's uh, having a set of practices. I have a list on my phone every day that I know if I do those things, I'm going to have a good life. And those include uh, reading the Daily Stoic, reading a book called The Daily Dad, which is a book about um, raising children, um, cold water exposure, meditation, uh, journaling, um, working out. So, uh, yeah, th those are some of the things. And when I journal, I try to focus on gratitude as well. Yeah. Did you have a question? I'm going to ask Pablo to stay after to answer Charlotte's questions and other questions, because I know we are running late. A donation will be made to Big Brothers and Big Sisters, uh, Pablo, in honor of your presentation today. And every time I take a cold shower, I'll think of you uh, out in Lake Monroe. Uh, I do want to acknowledge, again, it takes several people to make this meeting a success. Winston Schindel, who is our greeter, Peggy Frisbee for doing the introductions, Joy Carter, our Zoom host, Raj Dawi for selling Bloomington, the place we all love. Thank you. Our reporter, Greer Carson, who's working hard over here on his on his laptop. Uh, Tracy Jovanovic for her uh, great job as a camera and mic operator. And Tyler, uh, for your work today and also as for your pre-recital recital. And we wish you luck uh, come uh, this Saturday. Uh, next week, we'll be in the uh, back in the Frangipani room. And our speaker will be Bruce Small speaking on the challenge of external incidents impacting the campus community and strategies utilizing on, utilized on two campus. I'll be anxious to hear what that's all about. Uh, let's uh, stand for the four-way test of the things we think, say, or do. First, is it the truth? Second, fair to all concern. Third, will it build well and better friendships? Fourth, will it be beneficial to all concerned? And fifth, is it fun? Thank you.